Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. From whichever part of the world you are watching this interview, one more episode of The Revolving Perspective. And as we always do, we bring to, bring to you a perspective around a word, a perspective around a feeling, a perspective around a situation, or a perspective around something that's going on in the world. Now let me give you a perspective from my own life for today. Uh, 2020, March, the pandemic hit all of us. And all of a sudden, from all those things that a pandemic was throwing on to us, there was a silver lining that I found out there. And the silver lining was to go boundaryless, to reach out to people whom I always admired, to reach out to, to, to reach out and learn from them, to reach out and you know grow my social capital. And then I interacted with this one person who have a big role to play in the way I look at uh, what I am today. And actually he gave me a, a push, a small push in the beginning of uh, this, this period of mine, which I call it the second innings of my life. So I'm going to talk about a perspective around social media. Now for all of us, majority of us, we treat social media as one more tool to, you know, uh, relax ourselves to, you know, uh, go and find out some good things out there, understand and all that. But when I met this guy, actually, I started looking at social media from a totally different perspective. I started looking at it as a tool to grow my business, as a tool to grow my visibility and a tool to, you know, reach out to the world. And that's what this man did, did with me. I'm talking about Mr. Mac Lobsher. Let me bring him on, on the screen now here. Welcome, Mac. And it is uh, fantastic having you here. And it has it have always been a dream for me to ever interview you once. So if you can just unmute yourself. Yeah. So ladies and gentlemen, it's Matt Lobster for you. Hey, Welcome good, Matt. Jan. Thank you so much for having me on here. It's a, a pleasure to uh, uh, firstly be on here and speaking to you, but also it's been an amazing journey to watch what you've accomplished online and uh, how you've grown your network just following some uh, very basic principles. Um, so uh, yeah, pleasure to be here. Matt, uh, first of all, uh, thanks for the kind words that you have just said. But then coming back to this platform, the revolving perspective, and I want to understand one thing before I even ask you any question. For all our audiences out there, you know, whom am I talking to? Who is Mac Lobster? I need to really yeah. understand. You know, he has so many things to be said about him. He is a business coach, he is a, a strategist, he is a LinkedIn expert, he is, he is so many more things, you know, impact evaluator and all those things. So who is Mac Lobster? Um, that's a, I've never actually been asked that question. That's, uh, that's a really good one. Um, I, I would say in a nutshell, I'm a person who, you know, I get up in the morning to connect with other people and help them grow. That's, that's me in a nutshell. Um, you know, for me, it's, uh, you know, when people talk about different passions or things that excite them, um, you know, some people would be, you know, uh, sports or racing or, uh, you know, going out, having a nice meal or friends and, uh, you know, all the rest of it. For me, you know, I, I see it as my global family. And for me, every time I connect with somebody, for me, there's a spark. And, and uh, I, you know, my, my aim is to try and help as many people as I can just flourish in the world of business um, and just relationships, professional relationships around the world. Um, I have been, you know, if you look at my, my background, it's a very colorful one. I started off um, running my own business when I was 13 years old, uh, you know, running a photography business. Um, <laughs> and uh, I've evolved through the years, uh, spent many years in, in the hospitality industry where I learned how to communicate with, with people really well um, and how to build teams. Um, and then over the last 20 years, I've, I've specialized in the security market where I've worked with emergency services teams around the world. Um, but the key thing has always come down to that networking part of things. How do you connect with people? How do you find the right people to have that conversation with? So I, I think in a nutshell, for me, it's really, you know, I, I'm a, a, a super networker and I, I use LinkedIn as a vehicle. It's not, you know, if LinkedIn wasn't there tomorrow, um, I'd find another way to do it. But LinkedIn is just a, a beautiful vehicle uh, that has been built in order to be able to help us connect with people globally and I work with uh, you know uh, coaches consultants um, business owners entrepreneurs um, sports personalities uh, you name it um, people that are already experts in their own field but when it comes to LinkedIn uh, they just seem to have lost their voice and as you mentioned the pandemic when that hit 
one of the biggest challenges I found was all these experts who were amazing people. You put them in a boardroom and they could like, you, you know, they had everybody in the palm of their they hands. Blow the entire meeting off. Hey? They could blow the entire meeting off and they almost they, lost their voice. Exactly. And, and uh, you know, they could be on a stage with 50,000 people and it would be amazing. But, you know, they came and they were sharing real good value on LinkedIn. And it would, and, and when I went onto their profiles to see how they were doing, it would say, be the first person to comment. And I'm like, what's <laughs> happened? What's happened? So for me, that was the thing is to connect with experts and make sure that they get their voice heard, make sure that their branding's right, make sure that they get found, um, make sure that they're getting that connection still so they don't lose that connection with their community, if that's, uh, if that makes sense. Okay. So. What you have left out for our audiences, I, I believe I can always add to it, okay? Uh, Mac is actually a train running on a track, okay, between two destinations and anybody who can board that train will always reach out to a better destination. That's what Mac Lobster is all about. And you know, one biggest thing about Mac is uh, he is a real good collaborator. You know, he can re really make you introduce with every single co-passenger on that train for you. And that's what Mac Lobster is for me. Okay, Mac, coming back. Uh, about what you do and what, how you impact lives, okay? Especially uh, since I've been a live, live case out here, so I can give you a live testimonial right away on this platform itself. But then asking you one small question here, Mac. LinkedIn, okay, and especially from the part of the world that I belong to or I come from, it is still not being looked at with that seriousness in terms of, you know, as a tool to enable growth or enable brand growth, brand enhancement or, or rather to do business also for that matter. So if I may have to ask the LinkedIn expert, which is Mac Lobster out here, if you have to give that message to the people out here who are not taking it seriously, especially the entrepreneurs, because I feel, I personally feel an entrepreneur not on LinkedIn is actually not a businessman. He is, he is not operating his business properly. So what that message would be from your side going in? I think if you want to realize how important LinkedIn is for business, is just go onto the biggest search engine in the world, which is Google, and go and search your name. And I can guarantee you in the first five results, what's going to come up is LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Because Google, look at LinkedIn as the highest trusted source on the internet. Um, and at the end of the day, Google wants to make sure that they are presenting their users, the people that are searching with the best information for the search they've put in. And, mm -hmm. and if um, they look at LinkedIn, LinkedIn is seen as the highest trust source because it doesn't have a review center on there where you know, um, people can go and make fake reviews or people can go on and um, you know, if you look at people's websites, 90% of the time on a website is people created their own reviews, they you know, created their own customers. And it's all you know, fantastic all the time. Everything Whereas is on that, Everything exactly. Is out there, yeah. yeah. Whereas with LinkedIn, you can go and check the recommendations out and see who they are and see if they're real. So I'll give you a perfect example yesterday one of the biggest um, uh, purple uh, people in, in Canada in cryptocurrency um, mm -hmm. sent me two invites from two different profiles. And wow. I very quickly figured out that, well, ah, it's interesting. They've got less than 200 connections. Um, they've only posted once. They spelt their company name wrong. Um, oh. they, <laughs> okay. they, you know, all these little things. So I very quickly figured out that this was a fake account. Um, mm -hmm. And I then connected with the real person and said, hey, you know, just to let you know, you've got two accounts that are busy you know, um, trying to impersonate you. But that's the beauty of LinkedIn is you can very quickly look at some basics and you can see whether it's a real person or not. So for entrepreneurs right now, you know, if you're, as far as I'm concerned, if you're not on LinkedIn, you haven't got your profile right, your, your content strategy and your connection strategy, you don't exist um, in the world of business outside of your local uh, your know, community bre uh, breakfast network, as an example. Um, so, yeah. Okay. So as I expected, the LinkedIn expert, whenever he opens his mouth, they will give you a tip or two. So, so for our audiences, uh, have I, if I've not told you earlier, now I'm telling you sit with a pen and paper, if you are watching this interview anywhere from whichever part of the globe, because you'll keep getting those tips coming in from Mac. So Mac coming back to, you know, what you just said. So for entrepreneurs who are not there, who, have, who don't have their content strategy, who don't have their profile well placed, they don't exist in the business world. Now taking it forward from here on, you know, it's easier to, or rather, rather not easier, I'll say, but it is still not that sort of a rocket science to get a profile updated on LinkedIn and all those things. But you know, uh, for a basic entrepreneur, the first question that comes or the first roadblock that comes over LinkedIn is the engagement. 
okay the engagement to be uh, kept with others and you know the type of the content that you are trying to put in and and how are you trying to engage with your audiences now if i may have to ask you now sir so this is not going to be a linkedin coaching session but then out of curiosity i am just trying to ask you a couple of questions here i'll quickly shift over to mac as an entrepreneur very soon but then i couldn't stop yeah. myself to ask you this what is there for those entrepreneurs who are not very confident in content creation who are not very confident in their strategy to engage what is your message to them how how should be they looking at it so so they you know if you look at the the whole linkedin platform there's only between 1 and 2% of people that are actually posting content so you know from a strategy perspective just by posting you're already 98% ahead of your competitors so that's you know there's a there's a strategy right there now those 1 to 2% doesn't mean that they're creating great content some of them don't and that makes it even easier for you if you do create something of value to be ahead but you can still be on linkedin and growing your network and your presence without posting if you are one of those people who feel afraid to post just by going and engaging with mm -hmm. your target audience as well as those influencers within your industry will the uh, linkedin algorithm will put you in front of those people when it comes to search results um and as well when people are you know engaging and commenting they'll see your name and what you do um okay. so you know for me the biggest mistake i made is for 10 years i was using a social media um scheduling platform which is it's very powerful but what i thought was i need to send stuff out there and mm -hmm. that is also the biggest mistake you can make because if you send stuff out without engaging with your audience okay. actually saying thank you to those people who comment and engage then you, you know that's the the biggest mistake you can make so make sure that you say thank you be appreciative look after those people who appreciate you as well okay fantastic so mac now as i said uh, i'm not going to uh, revolve it around linkedin only so because i need to understand uh, for our my viewers as to what mac is bringing on the table apart from you know his expertise on linkedin and his super expertise on linkedin for that matter so let's talk to mac as an entrepreneur okay and i i i want you to go back to the flashback and then try and understand us to uh, try and make us understand as to where from this journey started and what was that change moment of your life which which actually made you to become a linkedin expert and you know how did that happen so it 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 all started quite a long time ago actually in 2008 2009 um mm -hmm. when the when we had the big market changes over here globally and um i um i was working for a very large organization they merged with somebody else and then the the financial crisis hit and uh, you know as uh one of those things that will happen to a lot of people i got made redundant at the time mm -hmm. and um i took some time off to kind of reflect and and decide what i wanted to do next and uh speaking to you know one of the things i always do is network and connect and then the strange thing is i went and did more networking when i didn't have a job um yeah. than when i when i had one because i wanted to understand what made businesses tick what was missing in the industry what was missing for them um and one of the big things i found was that so many businesses were they just you know in the digital age were not online they weren't present or if they were they were doing the normal kind of marketing ad stuff and and you would just felt like you were being sold to all the time and they weren't building a tribe or community and um i i had uh, a local business come to me and said you know mac uh, how do we get online um and this was you know 11 years ago and uh, i said well i'll figure it out to, how to build a website and then you know connect you to your social media stuff um and that just turned out to be a game changer for them and uh, i i i kind of carried on doing that and i've been doing that within corporates and under nda for a lot of organizations in sales and marketing um for quite some time and then um a couple of years ago um a, a client of mine uh, Brian Chipchase who is in insurance he came to me and he said mac listen i i've never posted online this whole linkedin things over my head i don't you know, i've always worked face to face um and i you know, put me in a networking room and i i'll walk out with 10 appointments you know no problem he says but i can't go see people what do i do um and i thought okay well i'll 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 put him through a little course and uh, you know he had never posted at all before <laughs> so we went through a process where we I, i put a little course together on all the basics that i knew and i didn't realize how many people didn't know these basics Oh. and um i went through and i i over a, a 11 12 week process 
um, took him and many other business owners to a stage where they went from never posting to authorities in their space on LinkedIn, where their competitors were commenting on their posts saying, this is the person to follow within the industry. Oh. Um, and that made a huge, in, huge impact because all of a sudden, if your competitors are saying you're the guy to go to, your clients have that extra confidence and faith in you because they're like, well, why should I go anywhere else when everybody else is saying you're the expert anyway? Oh. Um, and it's just presenting that social proof that you are good at what you're doing. Um, so, and, and when it came to coaches, business owners, entrepreneurs, international speakers, um, I work a lot with international speakers and coaches. And like I said earlier, you know, you put them in a boardroom or on a stage, no problem. But when I started seeing that voice not being heard on LinkedIn, I thought to myself, you know what? I need to go and figure this out. Why, what's going to work for everybody? And I, and I put together a, uh, a program where I can help pretty much anybody from any stage on LinkedIn. But mostly, you know, for me, the key thing is they have to be already an expert. I don't want somebody who's going to fake it till they make it. Um, I'm not interested in that. I want to work with true experts who need to get their voice because they've got a service to provide and they can help people, you know, um, and they've got all those expertise. So that's what I pretty much do. I work with C-level executives um, and, uh, you know, board members. And I, I take the fear away of, okay, well, how do I post? What do I post? I don't want to look like an idiot. Um, you know, I'm a leader. I don't want my organization to think, ah, oh, what the hell is he doing? You know, this old man on, you know, with a beard trying to be cool on social media. It's making sure that that brand is in al uh, alignment with, with the company as well as your own values. Um, and that's what got me really, you know, kind of uh, focused on trying to figure this out and make sure that I can look after because um, the only thing you have in life is your name and reputation. So for me, it was, how do I help those people make sure that their reputation is intact and they learn how to do this and they can have fun with it. Um, and I've got clients right up to, you know, in their eighties who are, uh, you know, extremely experienced and they are just creating beautiful things on LinkedIn, making so really awesome more connections. So then <laughs> I beg your pardon? I'm interrupting you here, but then, but then this question keeps coming in, okay, from various quarters of, uh, of, of almost all countries rather for that matter. We have so many platforms, okay? LinkedIn is there, Facebook is there, Twitter, Instagram, and then, you know, various other platforms. And, and there is actually a plethora of them altogether. Now, I know I'm convinced, but for my audiences out here, especially for entrepreneurs or for people who are, who are service level, ser servicing some, in some organization or the other, who are senior yeah. level executives and all for, all, all for professionals rather, LinkedIn is the best, okay? Um, and this, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty much very sure. Tell me one thing, we have seen platforms coming and collapsing all along. Uh, like, you know, there was Orkut at one point of time and then Facebook went through a lot of changes, even, even some improvement LinkedIn did. But if I ask the LinkedIn expert, Matt Lobshit today, can you see a world without LinkedIn? And if yes, uh, what is that one should be prepared with, number one? And if no, what is that new that is coming in LinkedIn? So if you can. So I think that's a, a loaded question, um, <laughs> but uh, it, it's a good one. I mean, the, the reality is we've seen, you know, if you look at, um, uh, as an example of, of what was one of the biggest social network platforms for the music industry that I used to work in, um, MySpace as an example, nobody ever thought that they would disappear. Yeah. And then overnight, you know, they lost all their data, they, they got hacked um, and, and uh, you know, these people that had spent 10, 15 years on their platform, all of a sudden had nothing and just disappeared. So the reality is I don't believe that we need to be naive and realize and, and think that any platform is uh, there forever. Um, so the real important thing is building up that network um, because LinkedIn give you the ability to download your data on a regular basis as well. So mm -hmm. that you can still have those connections. Um, but it's really important to try and move your network offline as quickly as you can and really connect with them. You know, it's no point, a lot of people say to me, oh, I've got 20,000, 30,000, 50,000 contacts. And I'm like, well, that's lovely. But do you really speak to all of them? Are they really good, good contacts? You know, when last have you um, spoken to them? How much business have you got from that? And, uh, you know, people look at me and, you know, I've only grown my network by probably about 1,500 over the last year. Um, but for me, it's been meaningful contacts that I've actually reached out to. I've had conversations like people like yourself. And um, it's, it's led to some magical things that have happened around the world for me 
Um, so the important thing here is, yes, LinkedIn, um, I believe will still be around for a long time, but we just never know, you know uh, what could potentially happen. I think the investment that Microsoft have put into them kind of proves that you know, they want to keep it going and they want to build. Um, and and you know, if you look at pre-pandemic, we were at 660 million users. Uh, if you look at it now, they're at 756 million users. A look at the percentage increase, that is super. So, you know, and, and C-level, high-level executives is and, one of the biggest growths. Correct. And, and one more thing that have happened over LinkedIn is uh, during the pandemic, correct me if I'm wrong somewhere, but the engagement levels have gone up very nicely during the pandemic. The, the contents that are coming on LinkedIn have gone up very nicely. So, so that, that actually proves one thing that this is one tool available, which is available to professionals wherein they can really come up, they can add value and they can, they can enrich themselves back again with the value that others are adding. Now, having said that, uh, I don't know why every, every single conversation that I'll start with you will turn out to uh, come down to LinkedIn, but then obviously that's okay with me. Um, I can, I can easily relate with that, but still there are, there are a couple of questions that are, that are going on in my mind related to it, which I always wanted to ask you. Now, one thing is here, you know, establishing contact engagement with the people that we are connected with over LinkedIn and, and, and that's, that's possible with a couple of them or, or maybe with a, with a select few of them, not with everybody else. But then if that be the case, then, you know, what is the real sense in making 30,000 connections out there, uh, which LinkedIn allows or, or whatever, number one. Okay. So is it, is it really going to help us first thing? And second thing is this network that we are building, uh, the, the personal network. See, I'm a firm believer that whenever you are trying to build up a network, there are two things always there. One is a connection and then comes a social capital for you. A connection is only a connection of social capital is with whom you are engaged with or with whom you can always relate out with. Okay. So, so considering this, tell me one thing, Mac, is it only a mad race to go behind the number of connections and boast themselves out there on LinkedIn, or is it really adding any value in terms of the strength of the profile or something like that? So, because I have seen two different contrasts happening and I'm a firm believer that, you know, it, you have lesser, but then you have better. So that is what I believe in, but then still, I would love to hear it from you. Yeah. For me, it's, it's, um, you know, unfortunately uh, human beings love that endorphin hits when they, uh, you know, have the, they have a lot of views, a lot of likes, a lot of connections, and they, they kind of feel, um, oh, you know, okay, I'm important. Wow, people are recognizing me. And that, that lasts for a few minutes. You know, it's, it's, it's literally just a, a dopamine hit. Um, but what the real important thing is, is making sure that it's that true engagement. It's that real um, meaningful conversation. So for me, quality over quantity every single day. And um, I think this, this summarizes quality or quantity. It summarizes. This is exactly what I was telling. Have lesser, but have better. Okay. So Mac, uh, uh, before I ask you some more questions, because I know everything is getting rooted to LinkedIn again. So I want to switch over to the different format of this uh, interview. Uh, I want to go for a rapid fire with you. Uh, okay. I, and I'm expecting a one word answer or a maximum one sentence and come quick on it because the next question is on its back. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, good luck to me because I know how fast you are. So, <laughs> and how much I can talk. So, uh, I'm gonna yeah, yeah, so, that's what, so that's what I, I'm trying to, you know, get a, get a straight answer coming, coming out from you. So the first question coming your way, if I have to ask you to describe yourself in one word. Passionate. And what is the biggest passion for you? People. Who, how do you define people? Relationships. And uh, give me a couple of uh, good relation and bad relation examples. Mm. Uh, good relationships is where you can have a conversation without it, um, without thinking about it, where it isn't uh, manufactured, it isn't hard work, it's just a natural uh, conversation. Um, uh, bad relationships is uh, a perfect example connect and pitch. Uh, which happens all the time on LinkedIn. Okay. One tip to come out of the bad relationships. One tip. Um, learn to be able to say no. Okay. And uh, is it only about saying no or is it also about the timing of saying no? The earlier the better or you should give, give proper chances for the person to convert? Um, I think you need to be mindful of your own, your, where you are at that point in, in time. Okay. Uh, Mac, one, one basic thing that any entrepreneur who is now entering the entrepreneurship journey, the first thing that he must consider himself for ready for 
or he must make himself ready for what is that would be from your side have a clear plan okay uh two things which he should be beware of two things that you should be aware of um i think you know cash flow and strategy okay this is aware of I, what if i ask you what are the two things that he should be beware of so he should avoid he must he avoid, avoid. um things that that aren't a productive use of your time mm -hmm. uh, and um vanity metrics okay so mac uh, stopping the rapid fire here because i think i could get a couple of good answers from you now here for which can give me a, a very nice uh, leeway for the next question coming out for you mac lobsher as the linkedin expert is also an entrepreneur and a very successful entrepreneur this we all know here now coming from all these expertise from your business expertise plus from your social media expertise and plus your your expertise with having such a vast connection or or network of people across the globe if i may have to ask you one message that mac lock show what to give it to now now i am asking for two messages one to the budding entrepreneurs who are coming up now that as to how they should be looking at their life so we have got some tips into the rapid fire here i want some elaboration here and one message to the existing entrepreneurs who may or may not be doing good into their domains but what is that uh, that mac would like, love to suggest to them okay so so budding entrepreneurs people that are just getting into in into the swing of things make sure that you have good coaches um you know i i invest in coaches all the time and don't be afraid to invest in coaches whether it be monetary or even offering your time if you can't afford it um make sure that you find a way because there are so many mentors and coaches who are willing to help and impart their their knowledge um if you are serious at getting those results and and showing them that dedication that you uh, uh that you have to achieve whatever goal it is within your business okay and what about for the current entrepreneurs uh, you know who are either doing good or not doing good so um especially for again, those who are not doing good let's uh, so hear it out the the important thing thing they i think there's a phrase called fresh eyes um which uh, a phenomenal businessman uh, a few years ago uh, taught me and you know when you're struggling in your business it's more often because you're uh, stuck within your business and you mm -hmm. can't see it um from a disconnected perspective okay. um, and you know if i look at mechanics as an example you know mechanics always driving around with a broken car but if they took themselves out of the situation and looked how that reflects on their business that would give them a new perspective so get outside perspective um and do yourself a favor go and read a book called the e myth um which for me is about working on your business not in your business okay so quite a important point coming in here uh, mac working on your business and not in your business now it is all about you know the third third perspective that you are talking about you know third person's perspective towards your business putting yourself out and then seeing it as such into it into the entire thing okay now coming back to the basic question where i started with this entire uh, conversation with because now i'm running very close to the time that i need to uh, call it a day now uh, for this interaction especially i can inter interact with you for hours together okay so that's not a issue at all but then for this particular platform i'll have to stop here but before i leave i need i need to need to understand one small thing from mac mac what is that one thing that always pushes you to you know to do those wonders that you keep doing you know like like making people connect making make giving people some good connects and making those wonders happening in the world because i have been a party to a couple of them which have really done wonders for me so what is that one push which allows mac to keep doing that continuously um for me it's 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 having a mindset of abundance um oh. because if you if you sit there and you worry about you know, I, i see so many entrepreneurs who think they're going to build a business through connecting people and they go oh i'll connect you but then i want a percentage of this and i want a percentage of that and they 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 have this fear of missing out you know right. oh well i introduced and i used to be like that a lot mm -hmm. um and uh, the moment i changed my mindset to the mindset of abundance of connect people and my motto you know see where a conversation may lead um and you know if you can just add value to other people um that that's what it's all about you will see it come back to you tenfold so mark i'm i'm carrying away two three important things uh, from this interaction okay especially 
one is uh, your your abundance theory of abundance reminded me of a good friend of mine one more friend of mine khalid dibran from malaysia you know he was the first who actually introduced me to this word abundance and and you know from that day onwards uh, this world have actually started living with me so so one thing is uh, obviously this world is now growing in the world because you will have to really believe into it to in order to experience it so do it to experience it sort of a thing it is and second thing that i'm carrying from here is that you know you, the times are changing and with the changing times you know be it the story that you said about 10 to 11 years ago or be it the story that happened in the last one and a half years with the changing times if we can't keep pace of our business and ourselves it's going to be difficult and and you know the one important thing that is happening in this world right now is digital if we if we are not there if we are not there at the good platforms which are proven platforms after that you create any number of platforms for you it's not going to help so be there where the public is be there where your prospects are and especially for my audiences out here believe me uh, mac is that one person who have changed my perspective about about the entire thing that i have just talked about and you know i have seen wonders happening i have seen wonders happening i have seen uh, a lot of things happening good with me and believe me that all came from one all that what mac did second the theory of abundance that he talked about so ladies and gentlemen today with this episode coming to an end carry back with you two things one keep pace with the world and two have faith on yourself thank you mac it was a wonderful discussion with you i would have loved to continue it for long but it was a pleasure having you on board with us here at the revolving perspective and this was a desire come true for me thank you very much thank you so much it's always a pleasure to connect with you and to everybody out there you know thank you for listening thank you for watching and if i can ask you one thing just take action just one little action you know if you've learned anything today um that's the biggest challenge most people face is they'll listen to something they'll go oh that was nice and then they'll move on mm -hmm. go and take something and action it today and your life will change Thank you Matt thanks a lot